Welcome back to my channel. My name is Orlando. And today, guys, we're talking about the market. This market has been extremely crazy. And one of the things that I want to talk about is why this market is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And it's going to explode into a crash, guys. I'm telling you. It's coming and I just want you to know that when you're trying to get into real estate, you're trying to get into your first rental property, you have to know these things. So let's just jump right into it. What are some of the things that are happening? Well, here's a couple of articles that I'm gonna read here. It says, many Americans are ready and eager to buy a home right now, but they're having trouble finding one. I have seen this and I know if you are in the market to buy a home, you have seen this too. It is so hard. The inventory is so low right now. It is just so hard to find one. I have stories where individuals are paying fifty to $60,000 over the asking price and are still losing the bid <laughs> to get the house. Like, can you imagine that? Paying fifty, sixty thousand dollars over the asking price and you still lose out. That's how hot this market is. Also says home sales edged down 6.6% in February compared to the previous month because there just aren't enough houses out there for people to buy. I just talked about that. It says the lack of supply is also driving up prices as bidding wars break out with multiple offers on homes. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Just everybody is dropping, you know, as much money they can because they want to get into a house. But see, this is one of the issues that I'm talking about, guys. How much can you owe, continue to overpay on a house, right? If the house straight down the street, you know, had an overbid of $50,000, is that house now worth $50,000 more or did they just overpay for it? Well, an appraiser, let's say he goes ahead and does that. Now, your house down the street is now worth $50,000 more because the way that appraisals work and house values work when it comes, to, especially to single family homes or residential homes, is you use comparables. And comparables, if the house down the street sold for $50,000 more, now your house is worth that too. So now what if you decide to sell your house you're gonna sell your house for $50,000 more and then expect to get $50,000 more than that. And you see how this snowball continues to happen. It is something that is going to explode. Can you keep that going? We all know good things like this come to an end. And the way that I just described it to you on the value wise, it is impossible to keep that up. Next thing you know, houses that were worth $300,000 will be worth $600,000. And that happened in a short span, one to two years maybe. Probably most of that appreciation happened this year. <laughs> so you can't keep that going. But then it also says this, the housing market is out of whack, says Lawrence Young, chief economist at the National Association of Realtors. There's a lot of demand, but the supply is not coming along. Young says homeowners in America collectively gained $2 trillion in home equity just over the past year alone as home prices rose 16%. Once again, that's what I was talking about. You having this snowball effect, and next thing you know, all of this equity has been gained by homeowners. It doesn't matter if you're selling your home. It doesn't matter if you're not selling your home. You are still gaining equity. You're gaining it on the sale. You're gaining on it if you just hold it and refinance it. Like you're guaranteed to get that equity based on what people are paying for it. Now here's the big thing. I can just see it now. People are just like, oh, Orlando, well, it's not going to happen the same way it happened in 08. You know, that was back when banks were making bad loans and things of that nature. And I'll agree with you on that. I don't see the financial crisis happening again when it comes to real estate because the banks aren't making bad loans. But here is the key. It's the home values that are going to drive this crash. If you were to refinance your home on these new, brand new prices where you've gained 
50, $60,000 of equity. And then next year comes along and the crash happens or this year the crash happens. All of a sudden your price of your home drops down by a bunch, right? Let's say it drops down by 60, 70 thousand dollars. Now all of a sudden you're upside down on your loan. Your house is worth less than what you owe. You know what I mean? And that equals the same thing that happened when we had the financial crisis back in 08. That same thing happened. You can see the writing on the wall. You've been through this before, so you know exactly what's coming, guys. You know what I said. But let, let's continue. It says, the number of homes for sale is at a record low with just two months supply at the current pace of sales. Once homes do go on the market, they sell fast. Homes are also selling at a record pace just 20 days after being listed. Just imagine, guys. 20 days after you put your home up for sale, it's just going, you close on it. And not only did you close on it in, in record speed, right? But you got more money that you even asked for. The house sold for 20, 30, 40, even in some cases, 50% more than what you asked for. And reason why I am so passionate about this, guys, is that I see that the banks the appraisers, they're working together, trying to get people into homes, but when people are trying to win the bids with paying over, the appraisers are literally saying, okay, well, we'll go ahead and say this house is worth 50, $60,000 more, 20, $30,000 more, knowing that it's not, knowing that it's not. But you know you have to sell homes. Banks wanna loan money on homes. And with the inventory that's so small right now, everybody thinks that it's worth it and it's not worth it. it and then it also goes, continues on to say, an increase in inventory is the best way to address surging home costs. And then Yun says, several fract factors are contributing to the lack of supply. He says, for years after the housing crash more than a decade ago, home builders were building too few homes. Some smaller home builders went out of business during the crash. We need to build more homes. He says during the pandemic, a big increases in price for building materials has made it harder to build smaller and more affordable homes in particularly. And, and I agree with this. In one of my videos, I was talking about the lumber costs have just shot up through the roof. You've got the pandemic, you've got stimulus, allowing people to put bigger down payments on homes are using the stimulus to get a down payment to get into a home. So we're fighting all of this demand towards getting brand new home and doing the responsible thing is, you know, if you do have a stimulus and all of your bills and stuff are caught up, just using the money that the government is giving you the best way that you possibly can and buying a home is one of those great ways that you can use the money. So I totally understand it. And then we had COVID, which is restricting a lot of the exports, imports into the country and whatnot. So lumber, housing material, things that you need, wire, copper, all of those things to build a home are more expensive, which makes more sense. But what type of constraint is this going to put on individuals? You have millennials, which it is making it hard for them to purchase homes. People in my generation, it is just so hard to try to purchase a home when you just got into an entry level job or you haven't been in your career for a long time or you don't have a really high paying job to begin with and someone's paying fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 more for a home that you just want to get into a starter home. I remember back in the day before the housing crisis in Vegas, Builders were doing bids and auctions, trying to make sure that they were being fair because there were so many people trying to purchase a home. Now that same thing is happening in Vegas today. You have home builders that are doing lotteries, lotteries guys, to say, okay, you get the opportunity to purchase a home because they have too many people trying to purchase a home. Now, what does this mean when it comes to the crash? All great things come to an end, just like when we just had the GME stock, just like we have cryptocurrency, just like we have in real estate right now. You cannot continue 
on this path of 30, 40, 50% appreciation in one year or even two years. It's unsustainable and it's just not going to work. And so who's gonna be left holding the bag at the end of the day? It's going to be home owners who are going to look at what they purchased the house for and what their house is worth next year or later this year. And when that happens, that's when the foreclosures come. That's when the own by bank or REOs come. That's when all of those things come. And once again, guys, you really need to know this information before you jump into the housing market. Are you ready to overpay? Do you have the money to overpay? Are you ready for the downturn that will come? And it is very important that you buy right. Don't feel the pressure to overpay for something just because you're in a bidding war, guys. Once again, I hope you got value out of this content. I'm gonna need you to watch this next video here. It is for you to get into your first rental property, for you to learn more about real estate. And I will catch you on the next one, guys. And I really appreciate it. Talk to you soon.